Hi, uh, welcome to my course on ordinary differential equations. Today we are going to introduce the topic with some general remarks and then in the next lecture we start with more detailed information about the equations we are going to consider. So the first uh, we are going to do is a review of basic concepts from calculus then we are going to define what a differential equation is then we are going to go ahead and talk a little bit why do we study differential equations and then I'm going to conclude with some remarks that another name for this course could be analysis of vibrations and I'll explain that particular terminology okay let's start with item number one a very basic review of calculus so in calculus you learn about the functions so you have y and x two variables that depend on each other so you have a notation like that and then you learn about what the derivative is and then you have a variety of notations Newton or Leibniz notation we have y prime or dy dx or f prime uh, of x or df dx these are all commonly used notations. You remember geometrical meaning of these things is that it is the slope of tangent line to the graph of y equal to f of x. So this is same as m or the slope of tangent line to the graph of y equal to f of x. Let's just go ahead and ba uh, look at some very basic examples. So easiest one perhaps, y is equal to x squared. You remember what y prime would be. We need to know the rules of differentiation and of course integration to be successful in this course. So I recommend that you take a look at your calculus book. Uh, there's a table there. There's also a table on my website you can uh, take a quick look at that make sure you are familiar with the rules of differentiation so y prime is of course 2x let's try another example suppose I have y is equal to c some constant times exponential of 2x so what is y prime so when I pose a question like this, I would like for my students to press the pause button and uh, try to answer the question themselves and then resume for, for the rest of the lecture. So do make an effort to use that pause button so that you practice your uh, uh, calculus and try to do some of these things on your own and that would make the course a lot more enjoyable. So we uh, have to remember uh, rules of differentiation exponential of an expression if you want to differentiate it is exponential of that expression times derivative of that expression and just while we are at it let's remind ourselves an expression raised to a power with n being a constant number it differentiates according to the following rule that we have studied in calculus 1. So here uh, we have to uh, differentiate the exponent and that will be a 2 multiplies our function so it becomes 2c exponential of 2x. Now if you look at y and y prime we notice an interesting relationship between these two. You notice that y prime is all same as y except it's doubled. So we notice the y prime is actually double of y. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. Suppose I have a function which is made of trigonometric uh, uh, functions, uh, say a cosine of 2x in plus b sine of 2x. Let's go ahead and differentiate. Uh, let's remind ourselves cosine of u when you want to differentiate it it becomes minus sine of u times u prime and sine of u when that one is differentiated 
is cosine of u times u prime. So in this case, example, we get minus 2a sine of 2x plus 2b cosine of 2x. What if I repeat this experience? So we have a notation of y double prime. So we have y double prime. Another notation for that is d2y dx2, quite a bit more uh, crowded, but more precise. Uh, we go with the y double prime notation. We have to differentiate again. Applying the chain rule here gives us another factor of 2, so it becomes minus 4a cosine of 2x, and then minus 4b uh, sine of 2x. Again, once again, let me remind you, I hope that you pause this video at any of these stages for calculation of y prime, y double prime, and try to do it yourself so that uh, it actually becomes a refresher for you. Again, I mean, uh, pay attention to some interesting fact. If you compare the y double prime to y, we notice a very simple relationship between these two. y double prime is minus 4y. So the second derivative is a multiple of the original function itself. <coughs> so these were some basic uh, uh, rules from calculus I reviewed. Of course there's a lot more uh, rules of differentiation there, but uh, you can take a look at that that yourself. Now next uh, let's go ahead and the uh, second item for today is what is a differential equation? So what constitutes a differential equation? We are going to abbreviate it to ODE, ordinary differential equation. I'll explain the adjective ordinary later on, but for now that's abbreviation for this course. So, <clears throat> to be uh, straight, ordinary differential equation are the relationships of the type that we just noticed here. A relationship between the derivative of the function and the function itself constitutes a differential equation. So, uh, very briefly, a differential equation is a relationship between a function and its derivative and also, uh, also possibly the independent variable of the function. So let's explain the terminology here. So a function is made out of x and a y, a relationship between x and y, a special type of relationship between x and y. Then comes into the mix a first derivative and uh, say second derivative and perhaps more derivatives. If I write a equation that contains the derivative perhaps higher order derivatives, and independent and dependent variables, that becomes an ordinary differential equation. Let's write an example. So simplest example is say y prime is equal to y. So again, let's everybody pause this thing and try to guess what the answer is. At this point, we are just going to rummage through our memory and remember examples from calculus where a function and its derivatives were the same. That would constitute the solution of this equation. Let's write another one. y prime is equal to 2y. We are going to learn methods for solving this, but right now we are solving it from the point of view of our memory. So we, of course, just looked at this thing. Any function 
that's a multiple of exponential of 2x has that property and that happens to be all possibilities so the solution of this thing is uh, some constant any constant times exponential of 2x another example we just looked up uh, a moment ago so y double prime is equal to minus 4y we are going to see that the set of solutions of this is a mix of uh, the basic trig functions that is any multiple of cosine of 2x and sine of 2x are going to constitute the solution of this differential equation so these were examples that we could immediately recall a solution from our knowledge of uh, calculus uh, of course uh, the problems become a lot more complicated than this so even adding a small modification uh, can make the problem substantially more complicated so here's an example what's a function whose derivative same as x plus y so let me pause for a moment and see if you can work out the details of this thing and uh, figure out what the solution is uh, it's unlikely that we are going to remember just a function off the top of our head that's going to be the solution of this and one of the goals of this uh, course is to go through the systematic method for solving certain equations that are amenable to us okay so we are going to wait for the solution and perhaps you might have gone through the steps of this in calculus but we are going to postpone this to the next lecture and see how is that going to work. Let's just be clear as to what a differential equation is. So if I have a relationship between x and y, such as y is equal to x cubed plus x plus 1 or something like that, that's a definition of a function. We are familiar that with that from pre-calculus or calculus. If I have a relationship between x and y prime, such as y prime is equal to say 3x squared, well that's a topic you come across in calculus 1. Essentially a derivative of a function is given and you find the function itself. So again pause this thing for a second and tell me what the answer would be. What's a function whose derivative is 3 times the dependent variable squared? Well, x cubed plus c which you obtain by rules of integration uh, is the solution to that. If you have a relationship between y and y prime or more generally x and y and y prime that's going to be a differential equation it's going to be tagged with the highest order derivative that we have so this is going to be called the first order ODE we just wrote an example of theirs for example y prime is equal to x plus y is an example of that if you have a relationship between x, y, y prime, and y double prime, you are going to have something that's called second order ODE. An example of this, something we are going to study later on, is something like say y double prime plus 5y prime plus say 6y and say cosine of 2x that's an example of a second order differential equation we are going to spend quite a bit of time in the course studying just these two types of equation higher order ones are also used especially in engineering you see third order and fourth order in topics like statics and such but the first and second order uh, have the lion's share of all the cases that people study okay <coughs> Now that we became familiar with what is a differential equation, let's go ahead and uh, look at topic three. Why do we study differential equation? So 
on the Y of the course. Uh, it looks like an interesting topic uh, from the mathematical point of view. Mathematicians can look at this type of questions and uh, it's essentially a curiosity driven investigation. A large number of students who take this course are not going to be math majors. Why is it that they are required to go through this process? What is so great about ordinary differential equation that makes it a requirement from all engineering students and sometimes biology students and so on? The reason is that when we study nature, we see that uh, to quantify what we see, we get to a differential equation. One of the uh, most famous laws of physics that perhaps familiar to all of you is Newton's law, uh, which expresses itself as F is equal to MA. Okay, what are the ingredients in this uh, famous uh, formula? Everybody knows what A is. What does that refer to? Of course, A refers to acceleration of an object. M refers to the mass of the object assumed to be constant in this particular uh, formula. F represents the total force exerted on the object. Now, can you guess why is this that this formula alone can justify this course? What is it about this formula that makes it to be a close cousin of our topic, ordinary differential equation? Where is a differentiation anywhere in this formula? I don't see any primes or anything. How is this a differential equation? Well, the clue, easiest clue, comes from acceleration itself. What is acceleration? You see in your calculus and then in uh, physics classes that if you are looking at the mechanics problem, you have a particular cast of characters. For example, over there you have T representing time, and then you have position of an object. You can represent it by X, Y, Z, U, or whatever is your favorite letter. Let's just call it X. Next up is, of course, velocity. What is velocity? Rate of change of position with respect to time. So you can show it by X prime, meaning derivative of X with respect to T. So now we have to be careful as to what a prime means. And then, of course, we have acceleration. Acceleration is A, is X double prime, or D2X, DT2, and lots of other notation. We can call this thing velocity, and acceleration is going to be V prime, or DV, DT. Many different ways of referring to this. So you notice that acceleration already has differentiation built into it. And that is the biggest clue why Newton's law is essentially a differential equation. So I see a second derivative on this uh, side. But we said a f an ordinary differential equation is a relationship between a function and its derivative. So yes, you can say I see the derivative of x, but um, where is x itself? Well, to make the problem simple, we have assumed m to be a constant. So the presence of x or x prime are buried inside this force F. Typical forces that we see in nature, they change because you change your position or you change your velocity. Let me show you uh, at least one example of this thing. So let's go to some uh, animation that we have from uh, some of our friends in uh, 
in the academia they make it easier for us to actually appreciate some of these concepts so let's go to an example of force that is very famous so we have uh, sorry for that uh, when it comes to concept of force perhaps the most famous force historically speaking is the force of gravitation uh, from ancient times people noticed that the uh, Sun revolves around Earth many people thought well it makes more sense to think about as Earth revolving around Sun many scientists study this phenomena and they came up uh, with uh, quantification of what happens famous case of Kepler's law and so on uh, where major discoveries and then Newton or Sir Isaac Newton got into this fray and tried to explain the trajectory of planets around the Sun so this animation is showing how this is gonna go so this little planet is uh, perhaps Earth and this is the Sun and we have some uh, data and uh, we can make this animation work you see that blue arrow that is indicating the force that is being exerted on earth or the sun you notice as the planet changes its position the amount of force changes so the force is a function of position you are close to the sun there's a lot of force on you you're going to be pulled in if you are far away the force could be substantially less it was an attempt to solve what the trajectory is that Newton ended up discovering calculus and uh, you owe your presence in this class in principle to him and some people to say to a German mathematician by name of Leibniz uh, he also discovered calculus on his own so this calculus was invented to study uh, celestial objects and their movement and those movements are essentially differential equations now that differential equation for this planet revolving around the Sun is somewhat complicated we are gonna go to something a lot easier so this is a two-dimensional movement and a little bit complicated uh, and the force law is hard but here's an another example uh, much more amenable to us everybody has an experience with a spring spring can also be source of a force so here we have a spring if I uh, stretch it so there, this green arrow displays the amount of displacement or the stretch the blue arrow indicates the force that the spring is going to be exerting on this hand if I go to the other side and compress the spring my displacement is going to be negative in this case but the force that is exerted on the hand is going to be positive this is an example of a simple law called Hooke's law you're going to study that in your physics or engineering classes uh, later on Hooke's law is a very simple law it says uh, to a certain extent the force exerted by a spring on an object that is attached to it is proportional to the displacement so displacement is going to be our X this is the force that is proportional to that X so let's go back to uh, our definition of differential equation he said a differential equation for us is a relationship between a function and its derivative so in this case uh, our lettering is that our main independent variable is time t our position is x our velocity is x prime and our acceleration is x double prime a mechanics problem essentially is a connection between these four 
items. So from point of view of physics or mechanics, you talk about acceleration and velocity, position and time. From position of mathematics, you are looking at x double prime, x prime, x and t. So if I write any relationship between these things, I have an ordinary differential equation. For mathematicians to express any relationship, they have this particular notation. Any relationship, they, uh, for example, give it a name. Let's call it, say, g as a name of a function. Then you have t and x and x prime and x double prime. So you throw all these things in. You make an equation out of it equal to zero. That's going to be a second order differential equation. So this is an example of a second order ODE. So second order ODE is exact vehicle that we need for considering standard mechanics problem. So this is one example. There are many, many other examples of applications of differential equations to the natural world, from physics to biology to other areas, and this is going to be the main language by which to quantify how things change. So later on in the semester, we are going to spend quite a bit of time looking at this issue in a lot more detail than what I made right now, but just keep in mind why we are doing what we are doing. Okay, going to the next uh, topic, which is what if we want to look at this from an even more applied point of view? You might think, well, I'm not going to be studying celestial objects or how uh, Earth revolves around Sun or something like that. Uh, I'm going to be an engineer who is looking at things that are much more immediate to me. And item number four here is meant to drive home the issue that just about any engineering problem that you look at, if you want to understand the mathematical basis of it, you are going to come back to differential equation. One of the most common observations that we have in our life is vibrations. We always see vibrations in uh, structures, in our electronics, and so on. If we want to understand vibrations, we need the material of this class. So let me go ahead and show you some basic examples of vibrations and then I will put in links related to lengthy videos that I don't want to take the time right now to include it inside this video. But I will be asking you to take a look at that so that on the first day we have uh, some a general understanding why we are taking this class. That's going to help us to all of us to be a lot more focused on what we are doing. We are going to be a lot more motivated if you understand what the use of this thing is. So it's not just uh, mathematical curiosity, which by itself quite legitimate. Uh, there will be some students among you who are curious about these things from mathematical point of view, but many other students are coming from an applied perspective. So. Uh, let's take a look at some examples of vibrations and that is uh, going to hopefully be brought up again in the course in later time to see how the material of this course is going to help us understand those things. 